Well, hey guys, I hope your week is going well. I uh, just moving along on a little coffee here. I'm wearing my um, lightweight uh, 32 degree shirt that I got at Costco. This thing, I'm just loving it. It's my, it's definitely my summer my summer t-shirt, shirt, dress shirt, multi-purpose shirt. Uh, it's really comfortable. I, everything I purchased in the 32 degree line has been phenomenal, I don't know. But you guys really seem to enjoy my video last week um, reviewing all of my favorite liquid sunscreens, liquid sunscreens for oily skin. So if you missed that video, check it out. But today I'm going to review my favorite, uh, or some of my favorite tinted sunscreens, tinted sunscreens that I'm currently using, have used in the past, um, and uh, you know, sort of my, my favorites for you guys. So I really like the tinted sunscreens that aim to offer a universal tint for masking the white cast of the underlying mineral component of the sunscreen. I think that really can boost compliance of sunscreen use. Not only that, but most tinted sunscreens, both um, tinted sunscreens as well as you know your BB and CC creams, they contain an inactive ingredient called iron oxides. And I've talked about this before, but if this is one of your first videos of mine that you're watching. Iron oxides, are uh, an ingredient that can actually help protect against the wavelengths of broader light, of visible light, that drive hyperpigmentation, namely blue light. And having those in a tinted sunscreen is, is a useful ingredient, particularly for those who are plagued by hyperpigmentation, melasma, dark spots. Um, it, can, it can really be helpful as an, additional, as an additional ingredient. So most of the sunscreens I'm gonna review for you guys today have, have iron oxides in them. First up is um, one by Color Science. You guys really seem to be enjoying Color Science, and um, you know I've been trying out the Sun for Sun Forgettable Total Protection Face Shield. A lot of you guys um, say that you use this and you like it a lot. This is a really nice um, tinted sunscreen with a great universal tint. It's really lightweight and moisturizing. It comes out um, with a slight pinkish hue if you can see that. And I mean, it goes on, I'm gonna put it here on the left cheek because you, you all seem to appreciate seeing it actually go on. But it blends in really, really well. Can you see that here? It blends in really well, goes on. There's not even, you can't even tell I have a tint on, but importantly, the tint that is in this is masking that, that kind of white cast that you would get. I, I really enjoy this. I think you guys will like it too, those of you who are Color Science fans. There's also a coupon code below uh, for those of you who are fans of Color Science. You enjoyed my review of their mineral powder, but many of you lamented the fact that it is on the pricier side. You wanted to try it. So I have a coupon code where if you're interested in some of their sunscreens, you can get a, a, a travel size of, the, of that powder if you're interested in it. But this is a wonderful sunscreen and I think it, it will go over well in general. It is on the pricier side, as you all will probably note. It is $39 for this 1.8 fluid ounces, which is comparable to a lot of other, other um, expensive sunscreens, and it offers good UVA and UVB protection, plus the iron oxides in there. And it's got a universality to it in that sensitive skin, oily skin, dry skin, rosacea prone skin, all will will find that this goes well for them. It's just formulated very, very nicely. I've really been pleased with color science, but uh, for those of you who this is in your budget, um, you seem to be very happy with it. And I like it personally, and so I'm glad to hear that other people, other people are out there on the on the SPF bandwagon. But moving right along, the next sunscreen that is a definite ride or die, I mean, I've been using this before I was on YouTube. Uh, you know, early, early in my career, I started using this as a dermatologist, and it is it is definitely a favorite. This is the Elta MD UV Physical Broad Spectrum SPF 41. This is phenomenal. I mean, I have used this for, for years and years and years. This retails for, uh, 30 bucks for three ounces. So $30 um, sounds like a lot to, to spend on sunscreen, but this actually lasts a very long time. And I find that that is actually pretty affordable when you break it down ounce per ounce in comparison to some of the other sunscreens out there, some of the other more affordable sunscreens out there. I really think that ounce per ounce, it really doesn't end up being that expensive and it does last a long time. This in contrast to the Color Science one is a lot more, um, a lot, is a little heavier, okay? It's, it comes out, it comes out 
more as a cream, less as a lotion. You can see the tint is a little um, uh, less on the pink side, but um, we'll just put it here on the right cheek. All right, and you can see just putting it there, um, you know, it, it's less, less running. So, you know, on the left cheek you have the Color Science one, and on the right cheek you have the Elta MD one. The Elta MD one, as I said, is a lot um, thicker, um, a little heavier than the Color Science one. It has linoleic acid in it, which is a fatty acid that is very helpful for the skin barrier. This is, is a great choice for, like the Color Science, this is a great choice for sensitive skin, oily skin dry skin, rosacea prone skin. The one ingredient in this that could potentially be problematic just based on if you are allergic to it that is absent from the color science one is a preservative, which is, is fine, but people can become allergic to it, and it is iodyl propanyl butyl carbamate. Um, not, not a deadly ingredient, but if you are allergic to that, then you would definitely want to avoid the Elta MD UV physical. A lot of their other sunscreens, I believe, do not contain that in it, but this one does. So, um, you know, this one, this one and the Color Science, they're both water resistant. Um, and, you know, these, these are both phenomenal choices, albeit a little bit on the pricier side. But moving right along, drugstore win as far as tinted sunscreens for me that I have been adoring and really, really loving is Cetaphil's Daily Facial Moisturizer Broad Spectrum SPF 20. I will list a video down below where I demonstrate putting this on my skin so you can see it there so I'm not overlapping a bunch of a bunch of different sunscreen, tinted sunscreens and confusing the picture. But I do have um, a prior video where I put this on. I'll list it down below. It's, uh, it's a tinted sunscreen video, so check that one out. But this sunscreen is wonderful. My, my problems with it are I wish it were a higher SPF. SPF 20 is fine, but the way most consumers put on sunscreen, uh, you know, SPF 20 is, is not enough. I, I, I would like to see it in the 30 to 50 range, but it has the iron oxides in it, minimal ingredients that are going to be irritating. Um, it's really phenomenal. The other problem that um, is not a problem for me, but maybe for you, is the color, I wouldn't quite call it universal. It is a little on the orange side here. I'll just squeeze a little bit out onto my finger um, in case you don't have time to go back and see my other video. Um, it comes out It comes out as a cream, and it's, it's a little more on the brown tan side, but when you rub it into the skin, I'll just do it here on my hand a little bit, there is definitely more, there's definitely more of an orange, orange hue to it. And that may be okay for you. It's all right for me, but um, it's all right on my face, certain areas of my face, but uh, it might not be okay for you. But this one otherwise is great. One of my favorite drugstore tinted sunscreens far and away. This one retails, you can get it on um, Ulta for $14.49 for this 1.7 fluent ounce um, container. And actually, Price point wise, however, that is comparable to Elta MD. Elta MD is 30 bucks for three ounces, and this, at least on Ulta, is $14.49. So, the other ingredient in this, this is, that is helpful is uh, licorice root extract, glycerizate. That uh, can be helpful for redness. That's where they're getting away with the redness relieving. And it also can have a brightening effect. And um, so it can just kind of uh, transiently inhibit some of the biology of pigment cells and lead to lead to kind of a pause on hyperpigmentation and, and overall in part a brightening effect. So I think it's a ph phenomenal drugstore sunscreen with a tint to it. I wish more of the drugstore sunscreens out there had tint in them. Um, I really struggle to find affordable drugstore sunscreens Greens with a good tint. Everyone will comment that they love the Australian Gold Botanical Tinted Sunscreen, and I think that's fantastic that you all have found a sunscreen that you love and are using and that works well for you. If you'll recall back to my sunscreen review video from last year, the Australian Gold Botanical Sunscreen did not work well for me, but it is another affordable choice at $13.99. Um, my problem with that sunscreen and what, what I think was problematic for me is either the presence of eucalyptus, which is an ingredient that people with rosacea definitely should avoid, can be problematic for sensitive skin for sure. It was either that eucalyptus in that product or there's some sort of plum 
fruit extract. I don't know what it was, but it just really, really irritated my skin. I've tried it multiple times. It just was not for me. But I am so pleased that you all out there have found it and enjoy it and it's working well for you because that means there is more SPF on skin and less, less on shelf. So that makes me happy. Um, so do be aware of that as an option. And then my other favorite tinted sunscreen, I apologize I don't have it currently, but I've used in the past, that is affordable, is the Coats Face Natural Tint SPF 40. It's $24 for um, one and a half ounces, so affordable. The problem with the Coats, however, is that um, it does not have iron oxides in it, um, but otherwise it is great. It has a nice tint to it. Uh, like the Cetaphil one, the tint on that one is a, can be a little bit more on the orange side of things, I found when I used it, but otherwise it is great. It goes on um, sort of matte-like and is very, very nice. Excellent for dry, uh, rosacea prone skin, excellent for sensitive skin. Not a single ingredient in that is likely to be problematic for anyone, but at an SPF of 40 for 24 bucks, that's really, that's really affordable. You'll notice a trend here. The higher the SPF, the more expensive the sunscreen is, and that's always gonna be the case. You know, I've always said on here, 30 to 50 is what you should shoot for to get good protection, um, but and that higher doesn't matter. And of course, as soon as I start making videos saying that, I mean, that's always what I've learned, that's always what I've been taught, that's what all the papers show. We start getting some new papers that have coming out, have been coming out recently, just, just one actually, that showed that, that really high SPF sunscreens actually afforded uh, longer lasting protection. And that likely reflects just how users apply, apply the monolayer of the sunscreen. They just don't apply enough to get to the SPF on the bottle. And so it seems as though the higher the SPF the person buys, the more likely they are to at least get 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 some decent coverage on their face. Um, but you know, do be aware that as you get higher and higher SPFs, the the sunscreens tend to get higher and higher. Their their price point tends to, to go up, and whether or not that equates to actual true benefit, I think is becoming harder and harder to tell. <laughs> at one point, I would have said no, but just knowing how people apply sunscreens. Sometimes going for a higher SPF might be helpful to you, um, just so that you ensure you get, you at least get some SPF on your face based on how you put it on. Then last up, another um, sunscreen, another tinted sunscreen that I really enjoy that is definitely on the pricey side. My mother actually uses this and really, really loves it, is the, um, the Aven uh, High Protection SPF 50 Complexion Correcting Shield Mineral Sunscreen. This one is uh, for um, those of you who are wondering, I've been using this in the medium tint. I have a clip of me um, swatching this on. I'll insert it down below if I can find it. Um, but this one, um, it goes on a very, very matte, um, and I really like it. My mom loves it. She is a foundation wearer and finds that this goes on well over sunscreen and then over um, you know, makeup, over foundation, no problem. She doesn't have any problem using this with her foundation and kind of skincare routine. Um, and it's, it's great. Uh, it's uh, certainly on the pricey side though and not something that I would routinely buy for myself, but those of you out there who, who use it and ask me to comment on it, I do think it is good and I do think it is worthwhile. It has ceramides in it, uh, which are great for the skin barrier and it offers really good protection overall. It, it goes for uh, $36 for 1.35 ounces. So again, pricey, but like I said, the high protection, the higher the SPF, the more expensive the sunscreen starts to get. Whether or not that equates to any true benefit is, is getting harder and harder to say for sure, um, just based on how people apply sunscreen. But, but this is a great choice for people with sensitive skin, rosacea, it doesn't have any problematic ingredients. It is a good choice for people who are using Retin-A and peeling a lot uh, because it's got ceramides in it to be helpful for restoring the skin barrier. It, um, you know, is obviously got the great players in it to protect against hyperpigmentation, the iron oxides, and the mineral sunscreen ingredients. Um, this uh, does kind of stain fabrics, I will say that. That is a downside. The tint, the whatever they use in the tint here, does uh, wipe off on your clothes. So it wouldn't be so good to be wearing this with my 32 degree uh, white shirt. It does wipe off quite a bit. 
whereas the color science one, the L to MD one, and the Cetaphil ones I do not do that. I don't recall if the Coats one did that or not. Um, I don't think it did actually, but um, that, that's always kind of a nuisance to have stuff wipe off on your clothing and, and stain it, but um, you know, say la vie. <laughs> But yeah, those are, those are my favorites. Those are the ones that I've been using and loving and have used for a long time. Uh, comment below on what your favorite tinted sunscreens are currently and what you are using. Um, I'd love to know. It um, helps me to, to hear and learn about more, more options out there. But hopefully you enjoyed this review. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>